Hi. This is Mr. Moreno. Uh, this is for Path 7, Chapter 4.1. Almost done with the book of Earth's atmosphere, and this is about climate being a long-term weather pattern. Now, what does that mean? I put here climate versus weather. Climate is, if somebody asks you, what is the climate of where you live? They want to know what is the weather like, usually. So, for example, if somebody tells you, what is the weather usually like in Seoul? Well, that depends, right? That means that it depends on whether you're talking about in the summer, in the winter, or in the fall. But if somebody says climate, they mean all of it. Tell me how it usually is in the summer and how it usually is in the winter. Well, that's difficult to say, right? But we have found that there's actually patterns that are repeated. The climate in Seoul is similar to the climate in other places, which we'll learn about in page 127. That's the next section. But for now, you should know that climate means what is the weather like long term. Long term, like this year, how's the climate going to be? Well, something you can say if somebody asks you that, you could say, well, in the winter it snows, but it doesn't snow very much unless it's a very, very harsh winter. And in the summer it's really hot. And that kind of climate you'll see in page 126 and 127 that that is called humid continental. It's similar to the continental United States climate or same as the Eastern Europe and parts of Russia. And you'll see what the what properties those, that kind of climate has. Whereas places like Busan are subtropical, that means near tropical where the weather is a little bit more stable, a little bit warmer. So that is the difference between weather and climate. Clim weather means usually like right now, or it's happening right now, go look out the window. And climate means long term, this year or the following year, what can I expect? And on that same page, or maybe it was the following page, yeah, the following page, it gives you degrees. It shows you how the Earth is divided into degrees. And unless you took past six, you have no idea what that is, I think. So, think of it like this. I'm sure you've learned in math class that a right angle that looks like this is 90 degrees. And, this is even, yeah, this is inside the frame of the camera. And a whole circle is 360 degrees. So one slice of pie, you can think of it as one-fourth of 360, that's why it's 90 degrees. Well, the Earth is a ball too, so we found that, that this would be a useful way to cut it up. So we cut the Earth up into a pie, whereas where we call the North Pole 90 degrees, as you see here, and the equator, the straight line, 0 degrees. And you can think of it, maybe this is too much of a mess here, but I made these increasing angles be 15, 30 degrees, 60 degrees. And the reason this is important is that things along the same latitude from left to right, east to west, we call that the latitude lines, they have similar climates. And it actually has a lot to do with what you learned in chapter 2, which were wind, wind patterns. But there's another thing that has to do with what affects your climate, and that is altitude. And maybe that's difficult to understand, but it's easy if you see this picture. Imagine you're going hiking, right? Even on a hot day, this person down here on the bottom of the mountain may think that, hey, it's really warm today. But the higher you go up in the mountain, even if it's a, it could be a hot day, it starts to get a little colder. And the reason for that partly is because as you learn on chapter 2, the air column, the air molecules around you, the higher you go up, the thinner they get. So that thinner air becomes a little bit colder. And you'll learn why, I think, next semester. So the higher you go, the colder it gets. And there were 
two other terms that work for marine climates and continental climates. Marine climates are like the one in Los Angeles. It's near the coast, near the ocean, and the continental climate can be somewhere like in Kentucky, in the middle of the country. And this also has to do with wind patterns. If you think about it here, the ocean is all connected because it's all water, right? So it tends to be a little bit more stable, especially since it's at the same altitude. Since it's a liquid, there's no ocean mountains, right? So it's at the same altitude. It tends to be a same, similar climate all around the Earth, more or less. So the air that's coming here is very stable or coming from here. So cities like Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, Miami, their weather tends to be, at least the temperature, a little bit more stable than a place like Kentucky, where it has more to do with the heating and cooling of the earth, the solid earth, which takes longer. That's why it gets cooler or it takes longer to warm up and it can get really, really hot. And one thing that's very important that I don't, I'm not sure it explains at the end of the chapter on page 121 are ocean currents. Now, ocean currents are probably more important than this book leads you to believe. So here I draw, I drew North America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Finding Nemo, they talk about these ocean currents. That is the ocean current down here in Australia where Nemo's father wanted to get to to ride the wave all the way to Australia. These currents are very fast. If you happen to fall on one of these currents, you are dead. There's no way you can swim out of it. It is much too fast. Only probably very, very strong fish can do it, but even fish can get stuck on these if they are not designed to ride the wave. So what do these currents do? Think of it like a highway. These are very fast moving flows of water, kind of deep underwater, but this one I drew a little bit red because when it gets to like around the equator, it picks and when it goes around the Gulf of Mexico, it picks up a little bit of heat. That water is a little bit warmer. And what it does is when it goes up here towards Europe, it empties out that hot air that this water makes. And that is the reason why even though Europe is often warmer than Canada, for example, or even Russia, it tends, it, it's warmer because this, this flow of water that's warm heats up the air and sends the warm air towards Europe. So these flows of water are very important. In fact, about 10,000 years ago, I'm not sure about the date, but somewhere around 10,000 years ago, the Great Lakes of North America, Canada and the U.S., were a glacier. It was frozen. And when this glacier broke and it released a lot of fresh water into this stream, it broke the flow of this jet stream because the balance of salty water and fresh water was now uneven. So this whole system broke down. What did that, why does that matter? That caused, I don't know if it's the last ice age or the ice age before that, but that caused an ice age. Oh. So these flows of water control a very fine balance. If we break it, it could cause an ice age or some other drastic temperature, but this happened rather quickly. I mean, probably not from one day to another, but it can happen. So that's the reason why things like this flow of water, these ocean currents are pretty important. That is all. And I believe you guys know what a season is or can at least understand it. So I'll skip that part. All right. Bye.